Okay, so you join me now back again just to the west of Alton Towers, a couple of miles away. And we're just going to go through the simple process that I mentioned in the presentation and the information I gave in uh, How to Fly a VOR Part 1. So, what well, the first thing you do, first thing you do once you've determined what VOR you want to fly on, is put the VOR frequency into the NAV1 radio, or whichever navigation radio you're going to be using. In this case, I only have one NAV radio, which is NAV1, and uh, I'm not sure whether you can actually see the frequency or not. I guess you can. Uh, I believe you know, and strictly overhead, 2,000 feet, 1001. 115.7 MHz is selected as the frequency. I've also put 115.7 into the DME, so we can always tell our distance from the VOR as well. Uh, not all VORs have DMEs, and not all aircraft have DME receivers. What we're going to do now, as I mentioned in the video, probably the most important part of uh, flying a VOR is to ident the signal. So on this aircraft, as I mentioned, we have a port ident here. Now on some aircraft, you may have a, a big chunk of electronics, modern electronics, glass cockpit, whatever, and your layout will be different. In most training aircraft, you'll have a very similar layout to this. And in that case, you simply pull the volume switch. You simply pull the volume switch outwards, and that turns on the audio. On this aircraft, they also have a separate audio switch, which I'm going to turn on. So I'm going to switch on the audio, and I'm going to pull the ident switch, and listen for the Morse code ident for TN... TNT, Tango November Tango, which is dash, dash dot, dash. And you just turn it there, and if we wait again for a second, you'll hear another one. Now I'm confident that I'm tuned into the correct VOR, so what we're going to do now is simply turn the OBS dial on the OBI until we have a two flag, because remember we're flying to the VOR. We're going to turn it, we have, you see we have a from flag at the moment, if we turn that you'll see it goes to a two flag. We have a two flag and we're going to turn it until the needle centers itself. The needle centered itself on 065. So what we're going to do now is turn the aircraft onto 065. And in doing so, we should keep that needle centered. Now thankfully there's hardly any wind today. It's a very nice day, high pressure, barely a cloud in the sky. So today, our heading should be the same as our bearing. The bearing is 065. The heading is slightly off 070. You see the needle is ever so slightly to the left. That means we're being blown or we're flying ever so slightly right of 065. So we're going to correct that slowly. Have a look from the aircraft. Turn left, just 10 or 15 degrees. Now we should see the needle start to right itself back into the centre. Now again, if you've got a strong crosswind, your heading may not be the same as your bearing, because you're going to have to fly into wind in order to maintain a track of 065 to the VOR. However, if there's no wind, then you should find that your heading will be the same as the bearing that you're following. So we're currently flying on 040. Now the needle's still to the left of centre, but it's it's stable. One thing you'll notice, although it's not centred, it's not drifting any further left. So we're kind of paralleling our track at the moment. Not really acceptable. We want that to be as centre as possible. It is moving slowly to the right, but not enough. We must have a stronger wing than forecast. So quickly turn 025, you can see the needles almost back in the centre now. And I'm going to start turning now back to somewhere around 045050. 
because I've demonstrated that clearly there's a wind from the north pushing me south, in which case flying on 065 is going to be sending me off to the right of the bearing that I want. So I'm going to hold about 050 and see what happens. The needle's nice and centered and I'm just going to keep flying this heading and if this moves to the left, I'm going to fly... Kilo, final two six to land. I'm going to fly 10 or 15 degrees to the left. And you kind of just play um, trial and error. Which is the best heading to fly on to take the wind into account? But as you can see, nice and centered. Everything's good. Our DME is telling us that we're now 5.5 nautical miles from the VOR. Lovely and centered. We're now on a heading of 040. So you can see that we're having to fly into wind uh, about 25 degrees off our bearing, off our track, in order to maintain, uh, well, yeah, 25, the bearing is 065. That's the track along the ground that we need to fly. But we're having to actually fly on a heading of 040, which is 25 degrees left of the track we want. It's a touch to the right now. So maybe we're just slightly too far to the left. Then maybe about 050 should do it. Then we should start to re-intercept the radial. And it shouldn't be long. Four and a half nautical miles. Maintaining 4,000 feet. Keep a good lookout. One of the hazards of flying in very good weather like this, we have high pressure, and it's very hazy, because the high pressure is keeping all the pollution, all the smog down close to the ground. Which means that although my vertical visibility is very good, my slant visibility is pretty terrible. It's not ideal. I'm within limits, but only just. And the higher I go, uh, believe it or not, the worse it gets. So still maintaining 4,000 feet, needles ever slightly to the left now, heading 050, but you'll notice there were only 3 nautical miles from the VOR now. So we're going to turn left again. Needles slowly coming back to centre. I can see on my GPS there that the TNT VOI is directly in front of me, so it must be working. But we'll find out sooner or later. Maintaining 4,000 feet dead on. Now two and a half nautical miles. more sensitive now. The needle moves bigger movements across the face of the dial for smaller movements of the aircraft. Two miles from the VOR. So shortly we're going to be entering the cone of confusion. And what you're going to see is that this needle at some point is going to slide off the side of the scale, left or right, depending on which side of the VOR we're on. You're going to see the two flag become a front flag, and you're going to see a warning flag appear. I think the warning flag appears up in the top right hand quadrant. Not 100%, but the two flag will vanish, and a warning flag will pop up telling me that it can't get a decent signal. We're now spot on. Lovely centered needle. GPS is saying that we're just coming up to it, it's dead ahead, so the needle's again telling us that we're on the, exactly the right heading, and we should be flying over it any second, less than one nautical mile from the VOR, so at this point we know we're very close, assuming I didn't have GPS, my DME is telling me I'm half a nautical mile, so I'm confident that I'm close, there's the nav warning flag, at this point I cannot trust the OBI. And I shouldn't trust it. You'll see the needle starts to slide off to the right. 
it becomes unreliable, becomes very sensitive, and the two flag will disappear as we fly over the top of the VOR. Right now, it's now become a front flag. The needle can't make its mind up what it wants to do. And we're now directly overhead the VOR. What I'm going to do now is do a turn, 180 degrees, and we're going to fly the radial back to Alton Towers. Something that's very important to note, 
is that a lot of OBIs, especially ones like this, that don't hinge, but they actually move laterally and vertically, when they're inoperable, when they're not working, when they go into fail mode, when something's not right, when it can't get a signal, its default position is to centre itself. So you could sit here flying along saying, oh look at that, it's, it's centred, it's brilliant, look at me, I'm a great pilot, I can fly perfectly on a radial. Fact is, you could be flying anywhere in any direction if you're not paying attention to your DI and your, your compass. If you use that to fly, then you're doing something wrong. Because, like I say, some OBIs will centre themselves at a default position when they're out of service. So check for warning flags, really, really important. So things are looking pretty good for us. We're maintaining our altitude a bit lower than we were when we started, but we're maintaining 4750 there or thereabouts. Still ever so slightly to the right of the radial we want, but it's moving back to the centre. So we know we're paralleling it at least, and we're very close to it. We're within two degrees of the radial we want. Assuming that this is a full 10 degree full scale deflection, there are five markings, so therefore each marking is two degrees. The needle's now back in the centre, exactly where we want it. Our DME is telling us we're now 9.1 nautical miles from the VOR. Now what does that tell me? Well, when I measured it, our destination was 8.9 nautical miles from the VOR. That should mean, if that's centred and that says 9, we should be directly overhead. Are we? Let's find out. Hey, look at that. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Slow the aircraft down. And hopefully you'll be able to see it. There is Alton Towers. <laughs> 